This video tutorial is the first in a short library of tutes regarding chemical equilibria. We're going to look at some of the different equilibrium constants that we see in chemical equilibria and you can see most of these on this screen here. Kc is the head of the family, this is the general equilibrium constant. You may see this in some textbooks just as a capital K without a little c, but certainly most of the time you'll see it as Kc. But there are a whole raft of other equilibrium constants. For example, Ksp, the solubility product. There's Kw, the water self-ionisation constant. There's Ka, which goes hand in hand with Kb, with the A and B standing for acid and base. And these are the dissociation constants for various acids and bases. And the last one on this page is Kp, the equilibrium constant used in terms of pressure, obviously for gas phase scenarios. In this video shoot though, we'll just focus on Kc, the head of the family. So in general, for any reaction at equilibrium, this equilibrium constant can be approximated the way that we see it here. And the arrows are used to show you how the products are on top of that equation and the reactants are on the bottom. What's more, the coefficients in that balanced equation on the left appear as the power to each of those concentrations. So what we have on the right hand side is the Kc expression which is expressed in terms of the concentrations of those four species and to the power of the coefficient in each of those cases. These are the equilibrium concentrations. So when you have a system which is in some sort of equilibrium, eventually the concentrations will settle at a certain value. We know that equilibria are a dynamic scenario, but we do see that that concentration for each of the four is unchanged when at equilibrium. And so in square brackets, we've got the equilibrium concentrations. K goes hand in hand with the reaction quotient Q. Q defines the extent and the direction of a reaction at any time before the equilibrium has been reached. So the equation for Q is actually exactly the same as the equation for K. But note that in this case, the concentrations in square brackets are non-equilibrium concentrations. So Q can be used at any time in the life of this reaction, whether it's at equilibrium or before or after equilibrium has been reached. So if we think about some reaction and at uh, time zero, we don't actually have any products. We just have reactants. If we look at the equation here, you can see we would have a very large number on the bottom because A and B would be very large numbers. And C and D would be very small numbers. We don't have many products at this stage. But of course, as the reaction proceeds, we start generating more of C and D, and we have less and less of A and B. So the value of Q is changing. The concentration of the reactants and products are moving towards the equilibrium. In other words, K really represents a limit of how far the reaction can go. And at the equilibrium, Q, the reaction quotient, equals K. If we crunch the numbers and we find that Q is less than K, well then the reaction is obviously on the left. In other words, it's favouring the reactants over the products. If Q is larger than K, then the reaction is to the right of the equilibrium. That is, there are more products than you would expect if we were at equilibrium. This is the reaction quotient. Let's look at solving a simple Kc question. And in this case, we've been given some information about the concentration of the reactants and products, and we're being asked to determine the value for Kc. So the reaction is uh, heading towards equilibrium. It's at uh, 298 Kelvin. That's not going to affect 
our calculations. It's really just stating what the conditions are for the reaction. We've got methylamines reacting with water, which has an activity of 1. Don't forget about that from your lectures. And we generate some protonated methylamine and some OH-. Now, the information that we've been given is the initial concentration of methylamine. We're not given the concentration of water. We don't need to consider it because it has an activity of 1, and so it won't appear in the KC expression. Uh, and we're given some equilibrium. We've given the equ we've been given the equilibrium concentration for OH minus. That's all we've been given. Okay, let's see how this might pan out. A nice way to solve these kinds of problems is to draw a table. So what I like to do is I'm just going to move that down a little bit. I'm going to create a table, just spelling out what our concentrations are as we go through. So we start off with uh, some of this methyl amine and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tabulate the initial and then the final concentrations. So at first we start off with 0.1 Zero, zero, zero. Obviously, and then we um, we don't have any of this stuff. So let's just call that zero point zero. We don't have any of the products. Now, as the reaction proceeds, you can see it says at equilibrium the concentration of OH minus is. So we've made some of this stuff. So the question is, what is the final concentration of methylamine, and what's the final concentration of the protonated methylamine? Well, I hope you can guess that the value of protonated methylamine is going to be the same as the concentration of OH-. If you look at the stoichiometry of the reaction, it's in a one-to-one -one ratio. So this value should be the same. <clears throat> Similarly, that stoichiometry is going to give us the new concentration of methylamine. It's going to be 0.1, the initial concentration, minus 0 0.0066, because we must have used it up. Step two is to write out the expression for Kc. So, make sure I've got a bit of ink colour here. And Kc equals, we put the concentration of the products at the top and the concentration of the reactants on the bottom. And that's the equilibrium expression for Kc. So all that's really left to do is to substitute these values into the equation and that should give us our answer. So if I plug those guys in, we have something like this. And I plug that into my calculator. I hope I'm correct. I've got something that looks a bit like that. So there's a nice, simple equilibrium question for you guys. Obviously, they can get a little bit more complex than that, but... The procedure is really the same, and I think tabulating the data is a really nice way to tackle these kinds of problems. Well, that's the end of this first video tutorial, but make sure you watch the rest of the series where we're going to go through these equilibrium constants one at a time. We'll talk about how the solubility product can be used to describe insoluble or uh, sparingly soluble, I should say, inorganic salts. We'll look at the water self-dissociation constant. We'll look at some acid-base uh, equilibrium and talk about buffers and the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And we'll finish with gas equilibrium.